Appearing in a video before the UN Security Council, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky warned the massacre and Buka, just one of many, urging the UN to bring war crime charges to Russian military officials. Well, military expert, retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, joining us this morning to, to discuss this and, and break down what's happening in Ukraine right now. Colonel Davis, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Gruesome details continuing to come out right now of those civilian deaths, the massacres carried out, but the Russian military right now, a diplomat denying the massacre. In fact, this is what he said, quote, he said the other day, another fake attack was launched in the city of Buka. After the Russian military personnel left from there in accordance with plans and agreements, a few days later, they staged this fake attack, which is being dispersed through all channels and social networks by Ukrainian representatives and their Western patrons. All right, Colonel Davis, first talk us through what's happening in Ukraine at the moment and the tactic Russia is using to say this is fake. What's going on? Yeah, what you see here is, is uh, just part of the realization that in a full-scale, all-out war like this, you don't just have the war on the ground. You also have an information war. And, and look, we just have to be honest and admit and recognize that both sides are, are putting out information disinformation and sometimes misinformation where they intentionally mislead people that is why it is so crucial that these uh, claims of, of uh, war crimes and atrocities be uh, absolutely investigated a hundred percent and and preferably by independent sources so that we can gr ascertain ground truth of what's really right as opposed to being potentially misled uh and, and having our emotions pull us in a direction towards a certain end that may not be accurate with what's going on. And we need to know that whatever does happen, that people are held accountable, no matter who may do uh, any of these war crimes. Correct. So you're saying this is on both sides, the disinformation, not just from Russia, but also Ukraine. Yeah, we have seen, it's it's been unquestioned and, and now documented by the Washington Post about a week ago, is many of the claims that have been made have been later by, by Ukraine has been later shown to be uh, inaccurate. And, and knowingly so at the time. And so that's it, it, part of it's understandable because that's just how war is. Correct. But we need to be aware of what's going on so that we don't make policies based on inaccurate information. That's right. Colonel Davis, President Biden has even called for evidence to be gathered to put Russian President Vladimir Putin on trial for war crimes. What constitutes a war crime? What type of evidence would need to be gathered to initiate this process? And would, would he even face a trial? Yeah, you know, a, a good way to look at this is what happened in Srebrenica in the Balkans uh, in, in the mid-90s. Uh, Radovan Krajic uh, and Mladic, his general, uh, were accused of war crimes and it was later proven to be absolutely correct. But it took three months after the end of that conflict for investigators to be able to ascertain enough facts to actually bring a charge. And then it was 13 years before the first of those two guys were actually brought up on charges. Uh, and it's just very, very difficult to do. And, and you have to have, you know, forensics done and, and all kinds of things here. That's why it's so important right now that they collect as much uh, information as possible so that it can be used potentially later. But look, the reality is that as long as Vladimir Putin's in power, the, the chances of him being actually brought on trial is, is very low. Right. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has warned that Russia is regrouping its forces to deploy them in eastern and southern Ukraine. And he says that this is a crucial phase of war. You also say the redeployment could expose Ukraine to a great danger. So why would this be a crucial phase of war? And what are you specifically watching out for right now? Yeah, well, one of the things that, that Russia exposed uh, in, in their initial attack w was a, a dramatically you know, poor ability to have strategy, to set a strategy that worked by dispersing their troops uh, in four separate axes and basically dispersing all of their uh, invasion forces so that the Ukraine was able to defend against all four of them instead of massing their combat forces at a critical point. It now appears belatedly they have recognized that error and now then they basically froze all the other axes and in fact have even withdrawn from Kiev to focus on the Donbas fight. And that's where the greatest danger for Ukraine comes because they have a, a forming pocket of nearly 50,000 Ukraine troops. And if Russia brings those forces down from Ukraine, uh, down from Kiev and then up from Mariupol and potentially close that gap off, then it could basically take out of play an entire 
uh, battle group of Ukraine, and that would leave the rest of their country in an inadequately defended. And you made an interesting point in a recently published article. You wrote, many in the West are also unaware that Ukrainian combat losses are at least equivalent to Russian losses, but in some categories are worse. It is also unclear how many trained troops Ukraine has to reinforce their side of the Donbas front as compared to what Russia can bring to bear. You just talked about that. How long can Ukrainian forces continue to fight this war with the resources they have at their disposal? Well, you know, one, one thing you have to admire the Ukrainian uh, uh, people is yes. that they are absolutely committed to this no matter what. They are clearly willing to pay any price. And and the, the key part of there is how many trained troops do they have? And it's it's not that many. But but look, the, the Ukrainians have shown that they're willing at the individual level, at the citizen level, to continue to pay any price and exact a price on Russia for every meter of territory that they take. And uh that's one of the reasons why I advocate that this needs to reach a negotiated settlement as soon as possible because there could be a lot more Ukrainians die, and I just don't want to see that. Yeah. All right. Well, retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, we appreciate you joining us with your expertise uh, and your wisdom this morning. We appreciate it. Have a good Thank one. Thank you. Always my pleasure.